Hello, Foundation. My name is James, checking in here with team number 33, the Killer Bees, at the 1st of Michigan District Championship. This robot is nothing short of beautiful. Inside and out is an engineering marvel. Winners of two district events already. Killer Bees have a ton to be proud of, and we have a ton to learn here on Behind the Bumpers. I have Mary Rose, Daniel, Ethan, Declan, and Sean. Let's find out more here on FUN. This video on FUN is brought to you by viewers like you and also in partnership with the following. Animark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to animark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interest, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. All right, Sean, take me through the end of Factor and what makes Killer Bees be able to score so well with this robot? All right, so, well, first to start off, on our poster over here, our old end effector was made out of polycarb, but because we had eight weight issues on our second cob, we made it. We re, we replaced it with self-reinforced SRPP, which has a little bit of carbon fiber on the outside to make it even stronger. So our end effector, our greatest strong point on our end effector is our ability to. Can we have an algae? Our ability to not only take algae off the reef. If the reef is here, we can take algae off the reef it immediately score a coral one level right below where we took the algae off from, which makes us really, really strong. Not only that, we also recently added a ground coral pickup so we could solve our L1 scoring problems so we could get a guaranteed RP every single time we get out there. Really interesting. Can you talk me through some of the iteration of that? So you mentioned how you changed it a little bit. What did that design process look like for the Killer Beast? Uh, we always wanted to know that we needed to get the RP by ourselves because co-op on our first two events was very unpredictable, which ended up with us getting five RP more often than we got six. So we had a feeling that we needed a coral intake for ground. In our early design phase, we did have an idea about putting something that could take it off the ground for the coral off the ground and put it in L1 in the trial. We were gonna originally have it in the back. It wasn't an idea that I think I came up with, but it, we was just cast aside as like, Something that would be nice if we had enough weight. Now that it actually became a feasible idea, we just put it on top of the algae, or the algae solution, that we could take it off the ground and put it on the coral so we could get an RP. We did prototype it a few times. Uh, the straps were new. We originally just had a bit of surgical tubing on here, but we found the straps to be a lot better. Super interesting, thank you, Sean. Daniel, can you take us through a little bit more of the engineering that goes into this robot? Yeah, sure. So this here, this is our funnel, which it takes coral from the human player station. And in the very beginning of our season, uh, you can see it on our poster here. It was uh, it was this. It was pretty ugly and clear, and we changed it to this because we felt that this uh, active funneling mechanism would be a little bit faster. So in the beginning of our season, we had not no active stuff since we made a little trade off uh, for weight reasons to make just a completely passive funnel, but. As our season progressed, we found uh, we had a lot of ideas on how to save a little bit of weight here, a little bit of weight there, and eventually we saved enough weight so that we could have uh, these star wheels here and all the motors and shafts and everything that come with that so that we would have a, uh, an active uh, intaking action which improves our intaking from the HP station a lot so that's a lot smoother, a lot faster, and it doesn't uh, get stuck and jam as much. Thank you so much, Daniel. Moving over to Mary Rose, can you tell us a little bit about the elevator, the climb, the lean that makes this robot so iconic? So, um, yeah, our, our climb is very unique. You know, um, to make our climber work, we tilt our entire elevator. Um, I actually have this example here. So what we do um, is we, t we have these cam cleats in here and we have a servo that releases them, which releases a string. And then our whole climber, fall, or our whole elevator falls over, um, which releases our elevator. So we have these ga uh, gas shocks here um, that make the elevator tilt. And then we have, um, so here, these are some of our um, climber prototypes. Um, you know, we went, we went through various processes. Like this was like one of our first ideas, um, you know, it just hooks onto one side of the cage, but we um, thought that this would be, um, this is difficult to align to the cage. 
and then you know the cage tilts a lot if you're only holding one side. So then we had this one, which is a harpoon. Um, so you just flick through, and then it holds both sides, and it's good at pulling the cage. But the problem we found was that it tilts a lot, and so it's easy for it to slide at the cage. So um, our, we came to this design, which still has the harpoon mechanism. But we have these um, what we call wings um, to help guide into the cage. So even if it's not like perfectly aligned, it'll still slide in like that. And it also makes it so it won't tilt. It's like no matter what we do. Um, so like on our actual robot, um, you can kind of see it here. These are the, the wings on our robot. Um, we have the harpoon mechanism in there. So when it flips out, um, these wings guide the cage into the harpoon mechanism, and then it pulls the cage into our robot so that um, the chain is centered on our robot. So then we can then, um, you know, climb. Sorry. Incredible, Marios, right? Uh, can we actually see what this lean looks like for the killer beast? Yeah, sure. Ethan, can you talk me through some of the programming on this robot? What makes this robot so well controlled and so effective on the field? So yeah, I'm really happy with all the work our team has put into the electrical and software robustness this year, the robot. So I really like our vision system. So we have two limelights on the front of our robot, which are actually kind of blocked right by the elevator here. We have two limelights, which we use for pose based off of the reef faces. And then we have auto align sequence and commands that allow us to drive towards the reef face, hit a button on our controller, and automatically align to one of, to the specific branch that we want to score on. So I think that's one of the biggest, it, it makes it, it's a game changer on the field. Um, I really like our LED status indicators. That's something I personally helped develop. So these, those indicate the um, state of the robot to the drivers. Like if we're at a certain height, if we're ready to score, if we're, if we're climbed, you might have seen it, but we have something called party mode, which we like to do year after year after. So once we're once we're up in the air, once we're climbed, we have a rainbow animation play. And we have our CAN networks are also quite robust on this robot. We have two networks. We have one on the Rio bus and one using the Canivore. Uh, everything on the drivetrain and the elevator encoders are on the Canivore bus and they're isolated from everything on the end effector and climber. Those are on the real bus. So that way, in case we lose the real bus and all the stuff that's on the leading edge of the robot, we won't lose the ability to drive or play defense. Very smart control. Well, Killer Bees, thank you so much for taking the time to talk with us today. There's so much to learn from your team. Uh, so thank you for taking the time of Behind the Bumpers. My name is James for Fun Robotics Network. Thank you for watching. Thanks for watching. Don't forget to like, subscribe, and click the bell to stay up to date on future fun videos. True competitors know that every second counts. That's why Kettering University challenges you to dive in right away as a first-year student. Participating in robotics programs helps Kettering students secure a valuable co-op. Whatever your interests, Kettering gives you more space to work faster and win faster. Learn more at kettering.edu slash first. Anymark provides superior service with the reliability that teams expect. Check out their sport gearbox and ratchet sport options to their tried and true compliant wheels used by teams all over the world. From mechanical and electrical products to tools and hardware, head on over to anymark.com for your one-stop shop of high quality and affordable solutions.